right. One more thing I, I would like to make it clear that the frequency meter that we are going to design is going to measure the fundamental frequency of the waveform. I will repeat this the frequency meter that we are going to design is going to measure the fundamental of the signal that is given to the frequency meter. Now, what do we understand by this? When we say fundamental component, it means harmonics. We immediately come to know it, it, it comes to our mind harmonics. Everybody knows harmonics, right. So, what is the second harmonic of 1 kilohertz waveform? 2 kilohertz, right, whatever it is, you know harmonics. So, if I draw a sine wave and if it is a pure sine wave, whatever I am drawing, assume that it is a pure sine wave and uh, then I can draw a frequency which has uh, say double the waveform, double the frequency. So, two cycles, uh, sorry, one cycle in half cycle and one more cycle in one more half cycle. So, this is double frequency and if you go on adding this, so it becomes the uh, total waveform. So, in this waveform, there are two frequencies, one is 1 kilohertz and the other is the harmonic of 1 kilohertz. Everybody understanding this? So, the fundamental frequency we would like to measure because our frequency meter does not do Fourier analysis of the waveform. It cannot find out all the frequency components of the waveform. For that, you need to do Fourier analysis. Everybody understanding this? Our instrument is simple instrument which will only find out the zero crossings of the waveform. Wherever there are zero crossings, it will find out the zero crossings and how frequently the zero crossings are appearing, it will count that and then it will show the value. Correct? The frequency meter is not going to show you or indicate that the waveform that you have connected is not a sine wave or it is a triangular wave. It is not going to show. You have to connect oscilloscope for that to know the waveform, but it will only show you how frequently the zero crossings are there in the waveform. Everybody understanding this? So, we are not going to measure harmonics. For measuring harmonics, you need harmonic analyzer, right. So, the frequency meter that we are going to design is going to uh, indicate what? <coughs> fundamental of the frequency, fundamental component of the frequency, right. So, so now we know the limitation, right. Now, how do we f find out where is the zero crossing? Try to understand again. If I want to convert this waveform and I want to make this waveform compatible with my 8051 microcontroller, I need to convert that into a square wave. So, wherever there is a zero crossing, wherever there is a zero, zero crossing, I will uh, have a high to low transition or low to high transition. So, this may look like a square wave when passed through the interfacing circuitry and so on. And I am going to find out how many uh, falling edges are there in a second or how many rising edges are there in a second. That will give me an idea about the frequency of the signal. So, our job is to find out something that does conversion from 1 to 2, correct. So, any circuit that comes to our mind, 0 crossing detector. So, we need to know zero crossing detector. We need to design zero crossing detector, correct. So, which is the building block of uh, zero crossing detector? Operational amplifier, right. Now, this zero crossing detector may be used or some sim simple uh, circuits also can be used, uh, but we start with the zero crossing detector. So, in its simplest form, zero crossing detector is uh, this is the input and this is the output and the supply what supply you will recommend for this for this op amp plus minus 12 volt 
but if I connect plus minus 12 volt, the output will also be plus minus 12 volt, which will not be compatible with 8051, correct? So, this will be unhappy. 8051 will say that I cannot work with this. So, we have to do conversion from plus minus 12 to TTL, right? This is one thing that we understood that as of now, as it is you cannot use 741 because it is creating some problem. So, there are other ways of using op amp. There are some more op amps available which have what is called as open collector output. So, I will draw an op amp and also indicate what is open collector here. open collector. So, this is the kind of uh, internal circuit it has. So, because it is an open collector, you can connect a pull up resistor outside this and the pull up resistor can be connected to 5 volt and uh, the output will be then TTL compatible, but it will behave like an op amp because the input circuitry, in between circuitry all these things uh, are designed. Uh, to behave like an op amp. So, it, it is an op amp, but the output is TTL. Everybody understanding this? So, we have to choose an op amp which uh, will give you TTL directly as far as possible. You can have this approach also. Suppose you are you want to use 741 only because you know 741 op amp, then you have to convert this plus minus 12 into 5 volt. So, how do we do this? We will simply use a resistor and uh, a zener diode, 5.1 volt zener diode. So, the output vol voltage will be 5 volt typically and the minimum output will be minimum output will be how much minus 0.7 because when the when the level here goes minus 12, the diode will be forward biased and it will show minus 0.7 as the output voltage. Everybody understanding? But that will not cause damage to 8051, it is able to accept some few uh, millivolts of minus voltage. So, this is also a appropriate approach, but the problem with this approach is that the power supply needs to be designed for plus minus 12 and also plus 5 for microcontroller. So, that is an extra burden on power supply design, extra money there. So, we do not we don't want. So, as far as possible design the whole circuit, so that everything operates on 5 volt that is always better. So, the approach should be selected properly. Everybody understanding this? So, the uh, op amp should be selected in such a way that it will it itself will work at 5 volt, it itself will work at 5 volt. So, unipolar op amp Unip the op amp which works on unipolar supply should be selected. How to select which one is suitable all these things we will slowly understand, but first uh, idea is to discard the plus minus 12 volt uh, op amp even if we know that even if we, we have used that, because the instrument will require that extra power supply plus minus 12 volt supply. Of course, if you want to design it that way nobody is going to prevent that. So, you can design it, you can experiment with that and so on. Typically, if you want to design a tabletop instrument, big instrument which has displays and it is powered by mains power, 230 volt mains power, then you can design relatively big power supply, multiple power supplies, whatever you would like to do. But when it comes to selling that instrument to somebody, it must be having competitive price. So, obviously, you have to discard some extra things in laboratory you can do anything. So, the approach should be to minimize the hardware, to minimize the hardware you have to delete extra things, extra power supply, extra components are to be reduced, right. So, we came to a conclusion that the op amp should be there, because we want to design a zero crossing detector and the op amp should be selected in such a way that its output is open collector type, so that you can connect a pull up resistor and we will get the 5 volt output, TTL output and uh, it should be operatable on 5 volt supply. This is the requirement, 
will have to find out which op amp satisfies satisfies these conditions. 